Okay, this video is going to be dedicated to section 2.3 and 2.4. Uh, what's going to happen is that we're going to go over any questions that were similar to ones that we did in class, but that we skipped to save time and get caught back up where we needed to be. So I'm going to scroll on down. In 2.3, with the pre-video that we had, plus all that we did in class, um, we pretty much only had two examples left that we hadn't covered, and they were both using quadratic formula. They were part of example four, and it was C and D part. So I'm going to work both of those out. So when you want to do quadratic formula, the first thing you have to realize is everything needs to be on one side set equal to zero. So I'm going to add this 16x squared over to the left side. Once that happens, you're then able to label your A, B, and C. It's a good idea to check for a GCF to see if there's something that can be pulled out, but not all three of these have something in common. So it looks like my A is going to be positive 16 my B is going to be 24, and my C is going to be 9. Remember our quadratic formula is X equals negative B plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So I'll write that down. Pop goes the weasel, help you remember it. And we're just going to plug in these values for those letters. So X equals negative 24 plus or minus square root 24 squared minus 4 times 16 times 9, all over 2 times 16. Uh, I always work out my radical part first, so I need to do 24 times 24, because that's my squared part. So 24 squared is 576. Let's write that in a different color up here. So, oop, I thought that was a different color. 576 is this 24 squared. And then we need to do negative 4 times 16 times 9. So 4 negative times 16 times 9. And that's negative 576. So negative 576. So this actually works out to be negative 24 plus or minus the square root of 0, because that's canceling out, all over 2 times 16, which is 32. Anytime you get a square root of 0, you really only have one solution. It just has a multiplicity of 2. It's the same solution twice. So it's going to be negative 24 over 32, because you can't add and subtract 0 and get a different number. It's still going to be negative 24 on top. So then this needs to be reduced by dividing by 8. So that would be negative 3 fourths. So there's my solution to C part. Um, for D, we need to get rid of these fractions first. That's usually my first step. And then I try to get it in standard form. So if I multiply everything by 7, since 7 is my denominator for all of the fractions, that means I distribute it to all three things in the equation. So 7 times 1 seventh would just be 1, so that would be x squared. 7 times 1 is positive 7. 7 times 4 sevenths would just be 4, so equals 4x. Get everything on one side by subtracting the 4x over, and it goes in the middle. a is 1, because it's 1x squared. b is negative 4, for negative 4x, and c is 7. Um, so x equals negative b, so that would be positive 4, plus or minus, square root, negative 4 squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So this would be 16 minus 28. This is going to be negative inside. How much negativeness? Negative 12. Okay. Now, here's the problem with this. We already know from section 2.4 that that would be uh, an i that we could pull out, and we'd say, oh, square root of 12 has a perfect square in it, and we would pull those things out. In section 2.3, this is just not a real solution. So we would be done at that point if you're in section 2.3. In section 2.4, you would actually work it out. So I'm just showing you the difference between, depending on if you're dealing with real values or if you're dealing with complex, that means you answer certain questions in a different way. If all of your solutions have to be real, which if you look at our 
I think our direction said, well, they just said solve by quadratic. They didn't specify. But if your directions specify give me real solutions, we would have to say there is no solution because this is not real. It's imaginary. Once you know about the complex numbers, though, you can give complex solutions. So we would take that, and I'm just showing you this because I want you to see the difference. Um, we would say 4 plus or minus square root of 12 with the i. That would be our first step. Bring out that negative. 12 is 4 times 3, so that would be 4 plus or minus the 2 on the square root of 3, i, over 2. And then because there's a common 2 up top, we can pull that out. all over 2, and the 2's are going to cancel. So it would just be 2 plus or minus square root of 3i. But that's only if we are allowed to use complex solutions. So this would be the answer in section 2.4. You would actually go all the way. In 2.3, since this is the real number section, we don't know anything about imaginary numbers yet, we would just say, oh, that's not a real solution. We don't know what this is yet. So it's all based on what you know so far, and, and when you're working homework questions, you need to make sure you realize the section you're in. When you're in a section where you have not learned that knowledge yet, you shouldn't be using the knowledge. So we can't use the idea of bringing the eye out until we're in the 2.4 sections and beyond. So just a kind of side note there. So that's the finishing part for the 2.3s. So I'm going to pull up my 2.4 notes from in class. Um, we were doing some of these today and some of them last time. So I'm going to go through and do any of the ones that we skipped. So we did not do C part on example one. This is squaring. We're just squaring a, a binomial that has an I in it. Remember, you don't just square both parts. You have to write it twice and FOIL. So 6 times 6 is 36. 6 times 7i is 42i. 7i times 6 is another 42i. 7 times 7 is 49, positive. i times i is i squared. So I always do that in parts. i squared, remember, turns into negative 1. So that means this whole guy right here is actually negative 49, not positive 49 anymore. So this would be 36 minus 49, which equals negative 13. And 42 plus 42i would be 84i. And that is written in standard form, the real number part and then the imagine, pure imaginary part. So that is how you do those. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do one more, the powers of i, just to remind you. In one class I got to this and in the other I didn't, so I'm going to put it on here for everybody. If you're trying to reduce down your i's to a power or value that we can actually deal with, remember we learned that it cycles through every four powers. So we decided that we could use a rule of dividing by four. So four goes into nine two times with uh, that being eight. With one left over, we bring down our two. Four goes into twelve three times. 4 times 3 is 12, and there's a remainder of 0. The part that matters the most, why we do this long division, is to figure out how much is left over. So i to the 92 is equivalent to i to the 0, which means it's 1, because i to the 0 is the same thing as i to the 4th. Um, because if you think about our little cycle here, i1, i2, i3, i4, I1 is here, so I0 would be one step back. So I4 and I0 are the same. So the answer here is 1 if they don't care about standard form. But if they ask you for the A plus BI, you have to put in an imaginary placeholder. So it would be 1 plus 0I. Okay. All right, this next section is all about conjugates. We only did C in class, so I'm going to go through these in good detail. So when you're trying to get rid of an i in a denominator, because remember i is a radical, you have to do the conjugate. So the conjugate of this one would be 2 plus 7i. So I'm going to multiply by that on top and bottom. So 2 times 5 is 10. 5 times 7i is 35i. On the bottom, we have to FOIL. So 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 7i is 14i. Negative 7 times 2 is, negative 7i, sorry, times 2 is negative 14i. 
and negative 7 times positive 7 is negative 49, but there's the i times i as well, so that's i squared. Okay, so on the bottom, the 14s cancel out, and this actually ends up being positive 49 because of the i squared. So then we take our answer and we say, okay, I have 10, and since this has an i in it, you need to split it into two separate pieces, and they both are going to have the same denominator. So 4 plus 49 is 53. So 10 over 53 plus 35 over 53i. Do double check to make sure that each of those fractions is completely reduced. Um, B is a little tricky because there's a negative out front here. When you write a conjugate, that, that sign doesn't matter. The sign in the middle is what causes things to cancel. So we would still have negative 3, but it would be plus i. That's going to be our conjugate. So we have to FOIL on both top and bottom. 2 times negative 6, or 2 times th negative 3 is negative 6. Sorry, i got to step ahead of myself. Um, 2 times i is 2i. 9i times negative 3 is negative 27i. 9i times i is positive 9i squared. I'll fix that in a minute. On the bottom, negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Negative 3 times i is negative 3i. Negative i times negative 3 is actually positive 3i. And negative i times positive i is negative i squared. Okay. Any of the i squareds, remember, change to negative 1, so this positive 9 ends up being a negative 9. This is a negative 1i squared, so that negative i, 1 you get from the i squared makes it positive 1. So we combine our like terms. So on top, that's negative 6 and negative 9. That would be negative 15. 2i minus 27i would be negative 25i. And on the bottom, the 3's cancel, and I have 9 plus 1, which is 10. So you might as well go ahead and split it into the two fractions, because in the imaginary numbers, the complex numbers, we have to write it as two separate ones. Um, so then reduce this, because these are reducible. So if we divide top and bottom by 5, that would be negative 3 over 2, minus divide both of these by 5 as well, minus 5 halves i. So there's the answer for b part. D is a little bit different because there's not a binomial in the bottom. This is a monomial, which means it doesn't need a conjugate. You just need to multiply by an i. The reason for that is that will make that i squared down there. So if I distribute the i on top, I get negative 2i plus 6i squared. On the bottom, I get 3i squared. The i squareds, remember, change those number signs, so this will end up being negative 6 and this will be a negative 3. We split this into two separate fractions, negative 2 over negative 3i plus negative 6 over negative 3. And notice this is all out of order. Because of the way this is distributed, our i is now first, so we want to fix that. But let's talk about the signs first. So negative 6 divided by negative 3 is 2. And negative 2 over negative 3 is positive, so it would be plus 2 thirds i. So just have to rearrange it in the right order and make sure fractions get reduced. Okay, E and F are just variations of the problems we've been doing. The problem here is that you don't want to FOIL this with this as a square root of negative 25. Anytime you see a square root of a negative number, the i will come out, and then you can take the square root of the number. So square root of 25 is 5 and the i will come out, and the square root of 36 is 6. So I can rewrite this as negative 3 plus 5i and 8 minus 6i. So now we're going to distribute. So negative 3 times 8 is negative 24. Negative 3 times negative 6i would be positive 18i. 5i times 8 is positive 40i. And 5i times negative 6i is negative 30i squared. Change our i squared to a negative 1, so this becomes positive 30. So 30 minus 24 is 6. 18 plus 40i is 58i. Similar idea here. There's all these i's that can come out because of the negatives. So square root of negative 36i is 6i. Square root of negative 49i is 7i. 
and square root of negative 16i is 4i. You can cancel out an i on top with an i on bottom since everything is times up top. There's no adding or subtracting. And then this would be 42i over 4. We can reduce that to 21 over 2 with the i. So I divided them both by 2. And then this is not in standard form. Since there's no number up front without the i, you write 0 plus 21 over 2i. So that would be in standard form. Okay, and then the last piece in this um, packet is so finding solutions of equations, and we can have any solution now, real numbers or imaginary numbers. So we're looking at uh, the, either these factor or they don't, and if they factor, factor them. If they don't, use the quadratic formula. So factors of 26 that make negative 2 don't exist. So I'm going to use the quadratic formula where a is 1, b is negative 2, and c is 26. So x equals negative b, which would be negative negative 2, so that's positive, plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So this is negative 2 squared, which is 4, and negative 4 times 1 is negative 4 times 26, so 26 times 4. Four, that is negative, is negative 1 over 4. So that's going to subtract, but it's going to end up negative. So that means this case is going to have imaginary solutions. So we have 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 100 over 2, because 4 minus 104. This is 10i because the i can come out, and then you have the square root of 100. And since I know there's an i here, I'm going to go ahead and split this into two separate fractions using the same denominator. So this is actually 1 plus or minus 5i. Those are my two solutions for x. Okay, let's look at b. b is already set up in standard form for the quadratic, so we can go ahead and label our a, our b, and our c. So x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. 8 squared is 64, and 17 times negative 4 is negative 68. So this becomes negative 8 plus or minus the square root, 64 minus 68 is negative 4 over 2. So again, this one's going to have imaginary solutions. So negative 8 plus or minus, that would be a i, and then square root of 4 is 2, so 2i two all over 2. And again, you can split this into two fractions, or you can just divide individually. So negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4 plus or minus, 2 divided by 2 is 1, so just i or 1i if you want to write 1i. I remember WebAssign will want you to split those into two separate statements, negative 4 minus i and negative 4 plus i. Okay, let's look at this one right here. This is also set up in standard form. So we'll do a is 1, b is 3, c is 6, x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac close that off, all over 2a. So 3 squared is 9, uh, negative 4 times 1 is negative 4 times 6 is negative 24. So 9 minus 24 should be 15 and it's negative, yep, just double checking. So this is negative 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 15 over 12. In this scenario, you still want to pull the i out, but square root of 15 doesn't have any perfect squares or is not a perfect square. So this is negative 3 over 12 plus or minus square root of 15 with my i out here over 12. The negative 3 over 4 can be reduced, but not the 15 and 12 because one is inside a radical and one is not. So that would be in standard form. Oh, I just made a mistake. Sorry. Those are not 12s. I just caught myself. I'm sure you guys caught me a minute ago. 2a on the bottom, not 2c. So this is a 2 
a 2 and a 2, so that means that my denot, my answer needs to be fixed. I knew that didn't look quite right. Um, this is negative 3 halves plus or minus square root of 15 over 2 with the i. So do you see what I did there? I had the 6 down on the bottom when it should have been a, and I just grabbed the wrong number. Very easy to do. All right, so we have two more of these, and then this section will be done. So a is negative 3, since this is all on one side. If there's ever stuff over here, you have to move it over first, but these were all set up equal to 0. b is 1, and c is negative 5. So I'm actually going to do this in a different color. So x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. This time I got the a right. 1 squared is 1. Negative 4 times negative 3 is positive 12 times negative 5 is negative 60. So this is negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 minus 60, which would be negative 59 all over negative 6. Um, we need to pull out the i, so that means we should split our fractions. So this is negative 1 over negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 59i on the outside over negative 6. And the negative over negative here is positive 1 sixth. This negative right here is it can go away because we already have two symbols out front. If we pull this out, it makes the plus a minus, but if we pull it out, it makes the minus a plus. So just if there's ever plus or minus in front of something with a denominator that is negative, you can take that negative away because the signs are both already listed out front. So there is our solution for this one. And finally, it's E. E is just to remind you of perfect cubes. This is a perfect cube, so it factors into a binomial and a trinomial. Um, remember, the cubed root is x and the cubed root is 3. So x minus 3, because you keep your sign the same. Then you times x times itself, so x squared. You times these two times each other, so that's 3x. And then you times the 3 times itself, which is 9. Soap was our way to remember the sign, so same as the original, opposite to the original, always positive. Now, in this scenario, this is factored, so you can set the x minus 3 equal to 0 and get one solution already. This needs QF, quadratic formula. This trinomial should never factor, but it can be solved. So if we just let a equal 1 and b equal 3 and c equal 9, we can find the two solutions that come from that quadratic. So x equals negative 3 plus or minus square root. 3 squared minus 4, 1, 9, that's my a and c, all over 2 times a, which is 1. So this is 9 minus um, 4 times 9 is 36, and it was a negative 4 times a positive 9. So I believe that's negative 27. So because this is negative, we need to pull the i out, which means I'm also going to split my fraction. There's my i, and I didn't do this yet, but this is a perfect square factor inside here. There's a 9 inside there, so the square root of 9 is 3, and you still have a square root of 3 left inside. So it's actually got two things going on. There's an i that came out because of the negative, and the number had a perfect square as a factor. So negative 3 halves plus or minus 3 on the square root of 3 over 2 times i. And that is the complete 2.4.